Southeast Asia has some interesting population pyramids. We can use a lot of the concepts we've already discussed throughout this course, but in this chapter, to understand a little bit more about what's going on in, in each of these individual countries. And it's important to keep in mind the total fertility rates that I discussed earlier in this uh, particular section. Once again, population pyramids on the left-hand side are men, on the right-hand side are women, and then we have from the bottom going all the way up, uh, we have different age groups, zero to four age group, five to nine, and so young people at the bottom, middle-aged people in the middle, old people at the top, and of course, as people age, uh, they're more likely to die, and so the pyramid gets smaller as we go to the top, on average. In the case of East Timor or Timor Leste, uh, the 2016 pyramid, it has you know, very much an indication of a stage two, fast growing, in fact, super growing country. We already know it has very high fertility rates. We already talked about that. Uh, but why? Uh, let's try to understand a little bit more why they have high fertility rates. Uh, so first off, we have cultural stuff going on. Uh, and so in terms of this country, it's Roman Catholicism is uh, the overwhelmingly most practiced religion. Um, so it's not Muslim, uh, which often we also associate with higher, uh, uh, higher birth rates and higher fertility rates because of the views on contraception, but just in general, a lack of family planning. Other things we got going on is economic uh, factors. Uh, this is not a well-developed country. It's low income. It's poor. Uh, it also has a lot of people working in agriculture. Uh, it's very much, uh, it's, we'll just call it a bit too uh, resource dependent. All those things we've already talked about, which are very characteristic of stage two countries, whether it be sub-Saharan Africa or in other parts of Asia. Uh, also, we've got a lot of conflict. And so uh, this is an area where you can go ahead and bet your bottom dollar that we're going to continue to see conflict. Uh, there's been civil war historically. There's been civil war uh, going on right now. Uh, so definitely going to see a lot of conflict. And this kind of sounds weird, but you got to replace those people from conflict. Uh, in particular, there was one definite conflict which caused a change. And so if we go to the green box, the green box here, it's significant because we see a changing pattern. Look at that age group, how above it, it kind of has this, you know, pyramid shape. It's getting, yeah, it's getting a little wider and wider. And then we get to 30, 34, and then lower, huge increases. So what's going on there is essentially about... 35 to 39 years ago, go figure, as we can uh, figure out from the pyramid, there was a conflict. The Indonesians essentially were trying to come through and wipe out the East, Tim uh, East Timor uh, groups that was, you know, recently uh, became no longer underneath the colonial power of the Portuguese. And so the Indonesians wanted to wipe them out, take over, uh, but they resisted. And so after uh, they resisted, we often see booms. We have, you know, when peace and prosperity comes, not so much prosperity, but when peace comes, we see definitely increases in uh, fertility rates, birth rates, which we see in this booming population. So all these factors together help to explain why here we have actually one of the fastest growing countries in the world, but also one of the highest fertility rates in the world. We have another example of a stage two country. So we have low income, lots of poor people, uh, also you know, good amount of rural population. Uh, although in the case of Philippines, people are just scattered on all the various islands. Uh, you do have Manila, which is the one core area uh, in terms of urban core, an economic core, but throughout the rest of the country, it uh, doesn't have a lot of money. Uh, it's very low income. Uh, but the big thing going on here as well is cultural. Here we have another example of a Roman Catholic country. So once again, the reason why I talk about culture earlier in this chapter is because it relates to patterns we see here just in demogra dem uh, demography in terms of birth rates. So definitely we have, once again, a little bit more of that opposition to family planning. However, things are changing there in which they're realizing this is a problem. And so they're starting to have more family planning uh, kind of going against the very strict traditional view of Catholicism. Next up is Malaysia, which is it a Roman Catholic country? No, uh, it's, it's a Muslim country. And so Muslim, we often associate with uh, also similar to Catholicism, uh, lower contraception use, uh, less family planning. Uh, just so essentially just less using birth lowering techniques, we'll just call it. Um, also, what we got going on here is we have a, a good rural population, good amount of rural population. Uh, also have a large a number of immigrants from China that came up until about World War II. And so as you get these new immigrants, they then over time their families. And um, so we can, you know, just add more people, of course, more people, more births. So Malaysia has a stage two shape, although it's starting to change. We can see the base of the pyramid uh, might be starting to stabilize. And so we should expect to see Malaysia become, as it's becoming more industrialized, we can expect to see its fertility rates go down and it become more like a stage three country. 
Now let's look at the role of conflict. And so in the French Indochina, we definitely have already mentioned conflict. We can see the impact of it here on the population pyramids. So above the yellow dashed line, a uh, much smaller population uh, compared to below, much bigger. So what happened there? There's more going on than just that uh, French Indo-China conflict. So we go to the green box. First off, this is an area of the world in which since basically since World War II, they've had conflict. So that's one reason why we can say we have uh, uh, much fewer older people in Cambodia is a lot of them were involved in conflict. Also, we have the Vietnam War, the French Indochina War, all of that as well. And so that ended, oh, about 1975-ish. Uh, so we can see how about, though, uh, 40 years ago, uh, things changed, though. Uh, so it looked like we had a little bit of a, a burst of population uh, right there. And those are in the 50s and 40s, upper 40s. But then below that, things changed. And there was a guy named Pol Pot. So another reason why we see a lot less people above the yellow dash line is an individual. And this guy killed about 2 to 3 million people. Came to power in about 1975. And he was gone very soon after. But 2 to 3 million people in Cambodia uh, were killed under his... Uh, under his rule. Uh, so we're talking about ethnic cleansing, we're talking about genocide, and there's even stories about how he wanted to save bullets and so he had people essentially bury themselves. So we're talking a major, uh, just a just major just dictator in more ways than one. Uh, and so below that yellow line, after the era of Pol Pot, uh, the population then came back, we had very rules, you know, the birth rates were quite high, fertility rates were right, quite high. Uh, so in the country of Cambodia, we can see the impact of conflict, but also uh, one in particular jerk. Now in Vietnam, we also see that impact of that conflict. And so who's most likely to fight in that conflict? Well, those are people that are today in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. And so in the case of the Vietnamese, we can see a de big difference in terms of the males versus the females. Also, just in general, we can see a much lower population. I mean, the population should be naturally going up from uh, the green box all the way up to the top, but you can see how uh, we definitely see fewer people above the age of 60, and that's because of the Vietnam War and this, the conflict that just was in this area uh, for a good amount of time uh, up until the 19, late 1970s, early 1980s. Uh, and so we definitely see also, uh, like I mentioned, the sex ratio imbalance. Now let's go down to the bottom. We can see a change. Uh, so what happened, what ended about 35 years ago? Well, that Vietnam War. Uh, so after the Vietnam War, that explains that bulge. We see that boop, that bust, or that burst, uh, that boom in population, that bulge uh, there in the green box is explained by the post-war, uh, 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 kind of this natural, what's make some babies now that we're no longer uh, in conflict. And so subsequently, there's been economic growth in Vietnam uh, more recently. Uh, also, there's been more kind of a proactive family planning. Here, we don't have a Muslim country. We don't have a Catholic, you know, Catholic country. So uh, they're going to be a little bit culturally more okay with uh, family planning and contraception use. And so that helps explain why fertility rates have gone down. But we also see the population pyramid ha here at the bottom, as the arrows indicate, coming inward. Here we have Thailand, and so about 60 years ago, we can see the pattern change, the population pyramid change. It went from uh, growing to now stabilizing into what we see today. It's actually that inward shape with those arrows coming in. So what happened during that yellow box? And so about 60 years ago, well, that takes us back to 1960-something, and that's when in Thailand, a Buddhist country, so not Muslim, not Roman Catholic, in which they actually the government wanted to lower the population, so they wanted to encourage family planning. This is a very much you know, innovative in its time and in its area. So they, you know, the government said, we need to change the population. We talked about in India, where that's a little bit later on for that to occur. In the case of Thailand, it already happened. And so one of the things they did was they really realized that also that, and, you know, when people move to urban areas, they have less kids. It's the rural areas where the birth rates and infertility rates are super high. So they passed out free contraception and promoted free contraception uh, to the rural areas, which helped. And so, like I said, you get the cultural factors with being more Buddhist. Uh, also, just in general, uh, uh, different views on, on sex and women. And so women typically are a little bit more literate, uh, still poor, uh, but a little bit more literate. And so have more access to knowledge. Uh, ideas and all of that as well. Uh, so coming in inward, we can see the change in Thailand in which it has a very low fertility rate. And it's just those years that happened, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, they have a lasting effect over time in which they reduce the fertility rates, birth rates, and then change the population pyramids. Finally, Singapore, which has the lowest fertility rates, 
uh, in Southeast Asia. And as we can tell here has it is very much an extreme inward bottom base. So it's very much a stage four country. So why fertility rates so low here? Why do we see this changing shape uh, beginning with those that are in their uh, upper 20s uh, to now those being born how there's so much fewer young people. Uh, so what's going on there first off, we're pretty much 100% urban here. So we talk about all those various reasons why uh, when people move to urban areas, they typically have fewer kids. And so it makes sense in a city state uh, that we're going to have uh, very low fertility rates. An outcome of this is the government's actually trying to encourage couples to get married, start making kids. Uh, so when they, they give them priority in housing, uh, they get you know incentives. Uh, so we have these, these various reasons uh, that we see in other places that they're trying to in get people to stop having babies. Uh, they're trying to you know give people you know you know b money to essentially have vasectomies. Here it's the opposite. They're trying to encourage people uh, to have. Uh, children. And so there's even stories I've read where uh, they're actually trying to, you know, teach young kids how to flirt, uh, online dating and, and tips and techniques in actually the schools, because uh, they're trying to encourage more babies being born because they see a very low fertility rate. It's okay. It's great because it's fewer people and it's more resources we get to enjoy for ourselves. But in the future, as this country ages, you're going to have fewer people locally to be able to fill jobs and fill uh, various positions.